Okay, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, showing up today. Um, we're here today uh, for a very solemn reason and um, we're going to open up with a few words of encouragement. O oh, Creator of the universe, we thank you for all of the people that have gathered here today. We pray that you help change the attitude of America toward those people that are different, whether they're black or white, male or female, no matter what their sexual, sexual or political orientation, we just pray that you help America be tolerant of those that are different. Amen. The mistress of ceremonies is activist Kamora Harrington. Okay, hello. I'd like to thank everyone for coming today, and I want to acknowledge the size of this group today. And I want to acknowledge that size for a few reasons. First off, we like to believe that we need huge groups of people to create change. And we don't. We need a few of us who are willing to step out and speak and be heard. On top of that, in December in Plainfield, there was a rally for this young man. And there were dozens of people at that rally in support of that family. But we have a tendency of losing sight and forgetting about what's going on in our society and what's going on in our community. Nashawn, and we're going to get into what happened to Nashawn, but Nashawn was attacked in October of 2007, and it's now July of 2008, and justice hasn't been made for this family yet. Change hasn't occurred for this family yet. The change that's occurred for this family is negative change. This is a ch family that's hurt. This is a family that's been abandoned by their, by their community in Plainfield and almost forgotten by the rest of us. So I'm very happy that there are a few people here today. I'm incredibly happy that there are cameras here and that there are reporters here so that we can remember what's going on with this family right now. We are not talking about something that happened 20 years ago. We're not talking about something that happened 30 years ago. This is not an Emmett Till conversation, but I can tell you that the pain Felicia is feeling right now is very similar to the pain that Emmett Till's mother felt all those years ago. We cannot forget what's happened in the past. We can't ignore what's happening now and I'm very happy that people are here today so that we can continue to work towards justice for this family. First up speaking today is Rabbi um, Donna Berman. She's going to start off and then we're just going to move through the program. So thank you all for coming. Good morning everyone. Thank you for coming out to stand in solidarity with Nashawn Williams and his family. Thank you for coming out to stand together as one community against racism, against violence, against injustice. Uh, we all know that in October, Nishan Williams was brutally attacked and his family harassed with racial epithets and the threat of further violence. We all know that as of today, nearly nine months later, no arrests in this case have been made. We all know that there has been a lack of respectful, caring response on the part of the police, the politicians, the clergy of Plainfield. In April, Reverend Lewis and I were invited to the first of a series of discussions about diversity held in Plainfield. This has been the only communal response to this vicious attack that I am aware of. To my mind, this was too little, too late. One city official admitted to me that Plainfield has a problem. He told me that in September, for example, on one of the school buses, someone wrote a racial epithet where they knew an African-American child sat each day. And at our rally in December, several people of color who live in Plainfield talked about the prejudice they have encountered. The town has refused to acknowledge and work to eradicate the racism in their midst. They have refused to take serious action. That alone is a manifestation of racism. And now Mrs. Williams has been told that the police are closing the case. This will mean that what happened to Nishan will be forgotten. And so we have come here today to say that this cannot be. We have come here today to implore the governor to intervene, to make sure that a full investigation is performed, and the message sent loud and clear that there is no place for racism in our state, in our society, and to make sure that what happened to Nashawn Williams results in a renewed, deeper commitment to educating people about the ugliness of prejudice and the beauty and value of difference. We are here to say that what happened to Nashawn cannot be swept under the rug, that we will keep the issue alive until there is resolution. Nine months after the attack, we have not lost our fervor. 
We stood in the snow in December in five degrees in Plainfield. Today we stand on the steps of the Charter Oak Cultural Center in the warmth of summer. Our passion for justice, our commitment to standing with the Williams family, our deep desire to create a different kind of world where bigotry is obsolete, no, no season, do not have a shelf life. We urge the people of Plainfield to stand with us, to join us in calling for and cooperating in a proper investigation, to join us in honestly confronting the racism that has for too long been woven into the fabric of our lives. The people of Plainfield need to know that we are not here to point fingers, but to reach out our hands so that together we can bring light to what happened to Nashan and the prejudice that continues to reside just below the surface, threatening to destroy us all. So thank you for coming. In a world of sound bites and shortened attention spans, it is heartened to see in your faces a hunger for justice that is unwavering and enduring. Ultimately, it is that hunger, derided by some who wish to maintain the status quo, that will bring us to the feast that is peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Thurman. Um, up next is former Mayor Thurman Milner. And this is kind of one of those funny places because Thurman Milner, you're just the grown man in my eyes, and I guess we're both grown-ups here today. Kind of cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> it's very ironic that having been involved in the <clears throat> civil rights movement of the 50s and 60s, that I have to stand here in Connecticut today and to join this family, to join our community uh, in support of the injustices that have taken place with Nishan. I'm here for one reason only, and that's to stand with Nishan and his family who are those who stand for justice. For I believe that although closure needs to come for the sake of Nishar and his family and the Plainfield community, this case should not and must not be closed until fair and true justice takes place. We all were arranged as we should have been when a tragic deadly event took place in Cheshire. But why hasn't there been that same outcry, that same outrage, the same action by our governor, by our state legislator, and the judiciary system when it comes to many youth of color throughout the state of Connecticut, including the Sean. It has been some nine months since this brutal attack took place in Plainfield. There is now talk of closing the case without true closure or true justice. What kind of signal does this send to those who continue to spew racial hatred, commit brutal crimes, as well as to the victims themselves. In this particular case, if something looks and smells like a hate crime, then what else can we call it? And if the Plainfield Police has exhausted all of its means to find witnesses and bring justice, then maybe it's time for our state or federal enforcement authorities to impose the hate crime legislation that are now on the books. As a product of the Civil Rights Movement, when I see these continuous unjust acts unresolved, I wonder just how far we have come in this state. I am, and we all should be, just as concerned about what happened to the Sean and seeing justice done as I am, and as we all should be, about what is happening right here in the city of Hartford. The Sean could have been my grandson, anyone's son, or anyone's brother, anywhere in this state. He is not just a statistic, but a young man who has been brutally harmed. When I pick up my local paper here in Hartford and read that 13 young men of color have been murdered this year, I don't see statistics. I see young lives whose futures have been brutally taken away, just as brutally as those lives in Cheshire. No one has called what happened recently on Park Street or to one of our former city council members just statistics to be closed without closure. Nor should the brutal attack that took place in Plainfield be let just listed as statistic and closed without closure. I do want to thank the Reverend Cornell Lewis and Rabbi and all those who have stood with this family throughout this entire ordeal. We cannot let this thing just close. I want to thank Deshaun and his family for standing up and standing tall 
through all the loose that they have gone through. When I look at this, the victories of the civil rights days are diminished. When we see these kinds of injustices that many of us fought for and thought we had overcome, we had this ugly head over and over and over again. We must continue this ongoing struggle for justice and equality so that the Shan and future Nishans can enjoy what has been promised and fought for throughout the civil rights movement. That is life, liberty, and justice throughout these United States and especially in this so-called constitution state of Connecticut. Thank you.